Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Catskull Academy, the series that aims to give you the best start possible in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be talking about propulsion systems, so I'll be answering the questions what is prop and why should you fit it, what's the difference between a micro warp drive and an afterburner and why might you choose one over another for a particular ship, and then we'll talk about dual prop setups, what these are and why you might use those on a particular build. We'll then have a look at some ships relevant to propulsion systems, and then of course all the relevant skills too. There are timestamps in the description down below, so if there's a particular section you want to jump to, head down to the description and head through to whichever chapter it is you want to see. Now if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting a like on it, and subscribe to the channel for all things Ebeckos. Ding that notification bell as well so that you never miss a video as I upload. I am uploading daily now, 7 new videos a week. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun, so make sure you don't miss out on any of those. If you've got a particular topic you want me to cover in a future video, let me know in the description below, or by coming and finding me on the various social media channels along the bottom of the screen now. As well, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. Details are at the bottom of the screen now, and every pledge, every dollar really helps, so thank you all so much. Cool, that said and done, let's talk about propulsion systems. Propulsion systems, also known as props, are modules that allow you to modify your ship's flight velocity. If you look at a ship's statistics page, you'll see that every individual ship has its own unique flight velocity stat, and propulsion systems allow you to modify that to a varying degree, based on whether or not it's an afterburner or a micro warp drive. Now, the reasons you might choose to fit a prop to a ship are twofold. First of all, for range control. If you're kiting, like for example in a Kestrel, then having an afterburner or a micro warp drive allows you to increase your speed to add some extra distance between you and your target. It allows you to control the range between you and your target, which is a key part of kiting. The second reason for fitting propulsion would be speed tanking. Speed tanking ultimately is, rather than fitting additional shields or additional armor and that kind of thing in order to take extra hits, speed tanking is the concept that why don't you just not get hit in the first place? You don't need big shields or big armor if you're not getting hit. The concept is ultimately to have your ship moving at a transverse velocity to the target faster than the enemy can track you with its turrets or faster than the enemy's explosion velocity on their missiles, that kind of thing. You move too fast to take damage. And ultimately there are two ways that you can go about applying prop to a particular ship, both with micro warp drives and afterburners. But what's the difference between the two? Well, let's have a look now. Micro warp drives are the big boys of the propulsion game. As you can see here by looking at this Republic Fleet small micro warp drive stats on screen, you can see that activating this gives a 518% increase to the flight velocity. That is an insane overdrive in the speed department and means the ship can reach some truly astonishing speeds. However, this does come at some rather significant drawbacks. Notably, the capacitor capacity multiplier here of negative 25%. What that means is that just by fitting a micro warp drive to a ship, not by activating it, just by having it fit to the ship, this ship's capacitor has been reduced by 25%. If it had a capacitor of 200 gigajoules, that has now been automatically reduced down to 150 maximum before the micro warp drive is even activated. Looking at the rest of its stats, the power grid requirement for a micro warp drive is a little bit higher than it would be for an afterburner of a similar size, and the activation cost is also significantly higher too. Micro warp drives, as you would imagine for that kind of speed boost, are quite capacitor hungry and they will eat into your already shrunk capacitor, in this case 45.11 gigajoules per activation cycle. The most notable thing about micro warp drives as a comparison to afterburners as well is the signature radius adjustment. When you activate a micro warp drive, your signature radius is significantly increased, in this case by 453%. Now a larger signature radius means that you are easier to lock onto and turrets will have an easier time tracking and hitting you. It also means that missiles will apply their damage better to you. In short, having an active micro warp drive on a ship makes you a bigger target. Now, you can say for speed tanking, yeah, but aren't I going at 518% faster? Surely that 453% signature radius is less than the 518 flight velocity. Doesn't that work out as a positive? Well, first of all, not really much. There's not that much in that when you look at it. 518 compared to 453, that's what, 65, I think, 75? 
65% increase, but also you are never actually going to have that full flight velocity adjustment of 518% if you're in combat, because if you're orbiting, then you've got the inertia modifier, which is going to slow your ship down to try and keep it within the correct orbit distance. That means you're going to still have that 453% signature radius adjustment, but you won't actually be getting the full 518% flight velocity adjustment. That means that a micro warp drive is not a good idea for speed tanking, but it is excellent for range control. You can get to those ranges ludicrously quickly um, and maintain those at, at sort of your own whim. Afterburners, on the other hand, are somewhat more subdued. Here you can see the Smuggler Small Afterburner gives a flight velocity adjustment of 231%. Whilst that's still a very respectable increase on the flight velocity and helps the Slasher 2 here maintain some very powerful speeds, it's not quite the 518% you'd get from the Micro Warp Drive. However, if we look at the other stats here, you can see the power grid requirement of 12 megawatts is a little bit lower than the Micro Warp Drive would be, and that activation cost of 18.64 is significantly lower than the Micro Warp Drive would require per activation. Notably as well, there is no penalty for fitting an afterburner. There is no signature radius penalty for activating an afterburner, nor is there any uh, capacitor capacity reduction for having the micro warp drive fitted. Afterburners do not cap out your uh, capacitor, nor do they increase your signature radius when they are used. That means that whilst they can still be very useful for range control, they are definitely much better for speed tanking. This allows you to keep up the increase in the, the ship speed whilst orbiting without that signature radius penalty, meaning you just get the bonuses for being faster. You are harder to hit without having that signature radius penalty. That means that here for a Slasher 2, a Smuggler Small Afterburner is a great fitting for speed tanking. Now, if you've been around any EVE Online veterans for any length of time, you may have heard the term dual propping. So what is a dual prop fit? Well, ultimately, it's where you fit both a micro warp drive and an afterburner to the same ship. Now, if you undock and go into space and try to activate two micro warp drives or two afterburners, or heck, a micro warp drive and an afterburner together, you'll get an alert from the game saying, sorry, you cannot have more than one propulsion system active at a time. There's no way to get these to stack. So, why would you fit a micro warp drive and an afterburner to the same ship? Well, simply put, it's to get the best of both worlds. In the case here with this Slasher 2, I have a micro warp drive fitted so that if I see a target at range, I can close that gap very, very quickly. I can go from 100 kilometers away to on their doorstep in about five seconds. Now, the, that then means I can swap to the Smuggler Small Afterburner once I'm up close and personal. I fly manually at an angle with that micro warp drive just to get into range as quickly as possible. I then switch the micro warp drive off and activate the afterburner so that I can speed tank at range. It gives me the range control of closing that gap ludicrously quickly whilst then being able to actually speed tank using the afterburner. Now I'm not saying this is the best way to fit a Slasher 2, it's definitely not the only way to fit a Slasher 2, but it is 100% an option. If you want to be able to use the micro warp drive to close the gap quickly and then have the afterburner um, for secondary speed tanking, that is a completely valid strategy and that is what dual prop is. Now at this point we should probably make a side note about the module sizes of prop and how this actually affects things because it's very tempting to get your first cruiser, look through your item box and go, you know what, I've got a couple of Mark V small afterburners, can't I just strap those to my cruiser and be done with it? And the answer is ultimately no. It, the size of the module really does matter when it comes to propulsion systems. If you try to put a small afterburner or a small micro warp drive on a medium or large ship, you get significant penalties. Basically, it's not powerful enough to actually get that full flight velocity adjustment, so really don't bother. You need to go up to the medium size modules. If you want a Mark V medium uh, afterburner, for example, to go onto your cruiser, put that on there. Don't put a small afterburner onto a medium cruiser. It's not not going to work. However, the other way around can have uses. If you put a Mark V medium afterburner, for example, onto a small frigate, that afterburner actually kicks up a lot more than it normally should. It is much more powerful than that ship should normally be able to. And ultimately, a Mark V medium afterburner 
is going to work almost like a micro warp drive on a frigate. However, it is going to chew up an awful lot of the capacitor and the power grid um, in order to have it active. I don't recommend it, but it is something you can do if you really, really want to go the extra mile to kick the speed right the way up. That said, when it comes to micro warp drives, because of how they chew the capacitor, because of how they uh, like they cap off the top of your capacitor allowances, I strongly suggest against fitting a medium micro warp drive to a small ship. It's it's almost impossible, and it just doesn't really work. Don't try it. Don't try it. It's my opinion that almost every ship in the game can benefit from having prop of some kind fitted to its low slots, and if you look at any of my fitting guide videos, the chances are that the low slots have at least one kind of propulsion system fitted. Ultimately though, there are of course some ship types that benefit from this more than others. If for example, if you're doing something like a Kestrel kiting build, then an afterburner is an absolute must, and probably it's better to go with something like a micro warp drive. Ultimately for range control, a micro warp drive is usually the better option, with speed tanking erring more towards the afterburner. Now, as you look through the ship trees, though, you will find that there are certain ships that do actually get benefits from this kind of thing. You've seen me using the Slasher 2 in this video and talking about it a little bit. If we scroll down here, you can see that it actually gets bonuses for afterburner boat uh, for the afterburner skill. Every level I have in the afterburner skill increases the velocity bonus by an additional 10% up to a total of 50%. That means a micro warp drive is still useful for closing the distance, but afterburners are actually better on this ship. If you have a choice between one or the other, just go for the afterburner and my usual Slasher 2 build is just an afterburner, usually with something like a shield extender or a shield booster in the second low slot. Now there are some ships that do benefit directly from micro warp drives as well. Once you hit Tech 7, you'll start getting the different assault boats like the Breacher Assault or the Punisher Assault, and they're Tech 7 frigates for each of the empires. These have advanced micro warp drive operation bonuses. Basically, for each level in advanced micro warp drive, you get a reduction to the signature radius penalty and a reduction to the warp drive capacitor need. That means that the warp drives become not quite so uh, hungry on your capacitor and your signature radius is dramatically reduced. In the case of the Breacher Assault here, you probably don't need to dual prop this anymore. You can actually get up close and personal using the, uh, the micro warp drive because that signature radius bonus uh, is massively reduced, the penalty is massively reduced, you can stay we know that the micro warp drive speed bonus is going to outweigh the signature radius penalty in regards to speed tanking. This actually allows it to speed tank in regards uh, using a micro warp drive rather than having to go to an afterburner. Now the same is also true for a couple of the faction frigates, notably the Sanchez Nation Succubus. This ship has an amazing little bonus for Advanced Frigate Command in that it gets a whopping 20% afterburner velocity bonus for each level in Advanced Frigate Command. Advanced Frigate Command 5 therefore gives it a 100% increase in afterburner velocity, which makes that afterburner act like a micro warp drive. Now, one of the things we haven't mentioned about micro warp drives, simply because it's not overly relevant to EVE Echoes yet, is what are called warp scramblers. Warp scramblers aren't in EVE Echoes yet, but I'm sure they're going to be added eventually. They are short range warp disruptors that also switch off micro warp drives, meaning if you rely on a micro warp drive and someone hits you with a warp scram, you suddenly go back to your ship's standard velocity. Now, because something like a Succubus being a close range frigate, it's going to be flying in warp scrambler range. It's going to be within the range of that normally. Other ships that are going to be fighting up, up close and personal are going to have their micro warp drive switched off by that scrambler. Here, the Succubus can fit an afterburner, get the same speed bonuses as a micro warp drive without the signature radius penalty and without the ability to have it switched off. That said, though, that does draw us nicely into the topic of webs. So if warp scramblers are the counter to micro warp drives, though admittedly, as I said, they're not in the game yet, then stasis webifiers are the counter to afterburners. What a stasis webifier does, if you're hit with one of these, you can see it gives a flight velocity adjustment of negative 51% in the case of the Mark V stasis webifier here. What that means is that your afterburner or micro warp drive, whatever bonus it's given you, whatever your maximum speed is, is now halved the moment you're hit with a web. For a speed tank, that can be devastating. Now, for an afterburner that gives you, say, a 200% increase in your ship's velocity, this then takes that all the way back down to standard flight velocity per web. And of course, these webs do stack, so if someone's got multiple, they can take you quite far below your standard uh, ship's flight velocity. 
A micro warp drive on the other hand that hit, gets hit by a web, well if you're getting a 500% speed increase, the web is going to take that down to about 250%, you're still going to be going faster than your standard velocity. In fact, basically, a web turns a micro warp drive into an afterburner and it negates the effects of most afterburners on a ship. So webs are kind of the counter to afterburners and the reason that you might choose to go for a micro warp drive if you're expecting to go up against webs. But again, there is that point in time where eventually we're going to have ships that have both webs and warp scramblers on them and those are a speed tank's worst nightmare. Fortunately, that seems to be a way off yet. Now you know I like to round these videos off with a brief discussion of relevant skills, and of course that's exactly what we're going to do today in regards to propulsion. As you'd imagine, propulsion comes under ship and under cruising technology. It is under here navigation here. And you'll find here skills for afterburner, micro warp drive operation, and indeed engine operation, which we'll touch on briefly in just a moment. It's not entirely relevant to this, but it's still kind of on the same track, so we'll touch upon it. Now afterburners, the afterburner skill here, you can see that if you train this up to level five like I have, this reduces the amount of capacitor that the afterburner takes on each of its activations, whilst also increasing the time of the activations. That simply means, imagine that you have to pay one pound every day to someone. In this case, that's saying you only have to pay every one and a half days, and you only have to pay 80 pence. It means it's a big bonus because you're actually going both ways. You're paying less, and you're paying less frequently. You then also get an increase to the afterburner velocity bonus as well, so if you're going to be speed tanking, get that afterburner skill trained right the way up because you're going to be using less capacitor and you're going to be getting a bigger bonus for it. Now the same is kind of true for the micro warp drive operation skill, exactly the same kind of stuff here. Warp drive boost bonus at plus 10% at level 4 here, let's show the level 5 version because it's not fair, I'm training it, I need to compare the two. It's 20% across the board just like afterburner is. Capacitor need is reduced by 20%, which remember for a micro warp drive is significantly larger than an afterburner, so that reduction of 20% to a micro warp drive is a bigger reduction than it would be to afterburner. Um, the activation time is also increased for the same reason that you are paying that activation cost less frequently and the boost bonus is up by 20% as well, making the already insane micro warp drive even faster. Perfect for uh, like getting up close and personal right into someone's face before they even know you're there. Now, engine operation is still a navigation skill. This is ultimately warp core stabilizers and inertial stabilizers. Now, inertial stabilizers, we're not going to really touch on much here. You can activate these to allow your ship to turn that little bit faster. If you're going for something like a micro warp drive build um, with something like, say, the breacher assault or the punisher assault, then those can be useful to have in the low slot. You activate it and it allows you that little bit tighter of a turning circle so you can maintain the orbit that little bit better. That's basically what those are. That's something I'll touch upon in a future video or ultimately when it comes to talking about those relevant ships. Not something I want to go into in depth on here. Warp core stabilizers, completely ignore that for this point in time. I am doing a video on uh, warp core stabilizing and warp core disruption, uh, disruption versus stabilizing, so watch out for that video if that intrigues you there. Otherwise, that really does cover everything that I wanted to say about the skills. We've had a look at the ships, we've discussed now what prop is and why you might fit it to a ship. Hopefully I now start to see a few more ships out there with full-on propulsion systems and fittings, see a few more speed tanks and people flying zippily um, along their merry way. There's a lot of fun to be had in speed tanking, it's my personal favourite playstyle, um, whether that's kiting and using things from a distance or getting up close and personal with something like the slasher here. Interceptors, if you've been watching these uh, videos for a while now, Interceptors are one of my favourite types of ships, whether that's standard interceptors or even just things like the Succubus or the Drumiel that uh, get those same kind of playstyle. Anyway folks, that really does cover everything there is to say about propulsion. If you do have any questions, of course, ask down in the comment section below or come find me on social media as per usual. You should all know the jig by now. Anyway folks, thanks for watching, happy sailing and see you in New Eden!